English opening. There are various different ways to play against it. C4. So we already, on previous DVDs, I covered brief, I gave brief introduction to the E5 system, and I just outlined in a couple of minutes uh, what is the plan for black here. But the other way to play against the English opening is C5. It's a more competitive way to play against it. More competitive when you're trying to get most out of this opening. So you're challenging white to the opening knowledge, to the knowledge of this opening. So C4, C5. Well, suppose white plays knight C3. And we play knight f6. And after knight f3, we play g6. Now, let me tell you a few things about this position. Why do we play on a second move knight f6 and then g6, and not knight c6, and after knight f3 followed by g6? This would be wrong position. It's hard to imagine that position like we have right now on the board is not pleasant for black. Actually, it may even be a bad position because white has e3 move. And now after d4, black does not have enough time to meet good with a counterplay in the center because white is trying to get d4, go d5 with the tempo attacking black knight on, a, uh, on c6. Let's see. For example, if black goes knight f6, white goes d4, and after c takes d, e takes d, and d5, this position is not that good for uh, for black, because white goes c takes d, knight takes d5, and queen b3. And position that looks uh, seemingly like normal position is not very good for black. Black has choices either play knight takes c3 or knight b6. After knight b6, d5, they are very uncomfortable with knight on c6. And if knight takes c3, white plays very white plays very strong <coughs> in between move bishop c4, and black is in uh, uh, trouble. The reason why f7 pawn is hanging, and black can do, must play either e6 or knight d5. Bishop takes d5 and then e6. In both ways, white has an advantage. Let's run quickly. Let's go quickly through these variations. For example, if knight d5, bishop takes d5 and e6, white plays bishop takes c6, check, pawn takes, and white castles. Bishop on c8 is not very good piece now for... Uh, for black, bishop on c8 is really passive. Bishop g7, then bishop f4, and followed by rook c1, white will have an advantage here. So, and if black does not play knight d5, then in this case they have to play after bishop c4, e6, and after b takes c, black is having problems again. If they go bishop g7, then white plays bishop a3. And if they go bishop e7, white plays bishop h6. In both cases, black is seemingly uncomfortable. So that's why it's important now we are looking for more competitive way to play in the opening. That's why it's important that after c4, c5, knight c3, we choose the correct move order. The correct move order is knight f6 and knight after knight f3, g6. Now, 
here uh, white has two ways to play. White has to determine what plan they want to play. <clears throat> they can go d4, where they get some superiority in its center, and they can play g3 simply uh, con uh, con g not the g3, but e3. g3 will lead to the same d4 variation after bishop g7, bishop g2, and castle, white will play d4, which will transpose to the variation we're about to analyze. So white has practically two plans, to play d4 uh, or to play e3, followed by d4. Well, let's look at d4 variation. Uh, after g6, black played g6, d4, c takes d, knight takes d4, and black plays knight c6. Now, here, white can go with g3 or with e4. After e4, we get 100% transposition to regular Marozzi bind position of accelerated Rakan, which is the part of our repertoire, if you are following to my advices. So then e4, we are not going to analyze here because it's already fully covered in our accelerated uh, Drakon Marozzi bind. So we look at g3 variation, bishop g7, bishop g2, black castles, and white castles. Now, this is typical and critical position of uh, this variation of English defense. So there is a pawn sacrifice idea, d6, which is insufficient and not recommended to play for black since after bishop takes c6, b takes c, knight takes c6, and if black plays queen c7, then knight d5 is very strong, and white has an advantage. So we, I don't recommend to play this pawn sacrifice because it's unsound. So the move, we want to play knight takes d4, Queen takes d4 and d6. Here is the position. Here is the basic position of uh, this variation. The best move for white and the most popular move in this position is queen d3. So white wants to play maybe bishop e3 and bishop d4, or uh, the, maybe they want to play b3 and bishop b2, black is not threatening to move their knight somewhere and attack white's king on d4. So white plays queen d3 just to prepare bishop e3. There is no need for queen d3, but white does that you know, because they want to um, play bishop e3. That's why, not because black has some kind of threat. Now, there is also other moves. There are also other moves. For example, there is a queen h4 move. There is queen h4 move in this position with the idea to play bishop h6. That's not a dangerous move. And uh, what black should do, simply play queen b6. Now, bishop h6 is not good since b2 pawn is hanging. So if white plays b3 here, then black goes bishop d7. And after bishop h6, bishop to c6, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and after e4, that was played already in the tournament games. So black plays a5, and after rook a to b1, or knight d5. But in, in, in both cases, black has a good position. After rook a to b1, black can play a4 with the idea of taking a, b, a, b and playing rook a3. And if white plays b takes a, then after queen c5, all white pawns are weak. Or if black plays knight d5 instead, then bishop takes d5, e takes d, and 
black plays a4, you see that queen on h4 is totally out of play. And white's, po white's position on queen side may collapse at any time. So this is good position for white and therefore for black. And therefore, queen h4 uh, is not a good move and it's not something white plays often. It's been played uh, once in a while, but it's a person who knows well how to play those positions. They would never play queen h4. So queen to d3 is the main continuation here. And after queen to d3, we play a6. Now this is a good move. And the idea of a6 move is to prepare b5. Obviously, we cannot go b5 right away because our rook is hanging. So, but the idea, uh, the idea is to play rook b8 and possibly b5. So what should white do here? White can play bishop to e3 and uh, to try to play possibly rook d1, rook c1, and c5. You see how there are two bishops aiming on queen side and rooks are placed in the center. This is the best coordination white can dream of. So, but, so we have to be careful how we conduct our action in this position. After bishop to e3, we play knight g4. Well, white has to follow their plan, bishop d4, and we go knight e5. Uh, white has, if white takes, plays bishop takes e5, obviously they cannot get any advantage because black has now two bishops, very strong dark square bishop, and then they're going to go rook b8, bishop e6. They have no problems and they are very, very comfortable. So. Queen has to move, and queen has to move to d1. That's the only square. They cannot go queen d2 because knight takes c4, attacks the queen. So queen goes to d1, and obviously we cannot play knight takes c4 since white wins after bishop takes g7, king takes g7, queen d4 check, knight e5 and f4, winning a piece. Of course, we cannot do this. So, uh, what we play after, in this position, after we played on, on bishop e3, after we played knight g4, bishop d4 and knight e5, queen d1. So, here, after rook b8, white can play here rook c1, and we can play bishop to e6. And after b3, we can go b5, and we have no problems. Black is okay here. So bishop e3 may not be the best idea for uh, white here. Um, well, suppose they play simply bishop to d2. Now, after bishop to d2, we want to play bishop f5. The idea of bishop f5 to force uh, white to play e4. Now, white plays e4, and now we go bishop to e6. And black wants to play knight d7 and get the counterplay on white's c4 pawn. So uh, the, the way game can continue is this. Uh, after e4 and we went bishop e6, now white has to play either rook c1 or knight d5. So they, But they first want to play b3, make sure that the pawn on b2 is not going to be hanging. Also protects the c4 pawn. It's a, it's a good move. Knight d7 now we want to uh, bring knight to e5 or c5 
with um, some activity. Now after rook a to c1 we play knight c5 and if after queen e3 we can go b5. This That's what black wanted. Black wanted to get b5 in and have active play on the queen side. c takes b, a takes b and rook c2. Now if knight takes b5 obviously we play rook takes a2 and we have great position so if black plays rook c2 then white goes queen to d, white goes rook c2, black goes queen to d7 and after rook f to c1 we simply play b4 and after knight d5 uh, white has absolutely no advantage because bishop takes d5, e takes d and rook f to b8. Let's talk about this position for a second. Uh, black has a better pawn structure because they have one pawn on a queen side holding two a2 and b3 pawns. So black also has powerful knight on c5. I would say black is at least equal, maybe little more than that. Black has no problems, that is for sure. Now that will approximately, that, that will about conclude our analysis of this variation of D4 um, uh, variation of English where we get positions very similar to accelerated dragon Marozzi bind. So we're talking about c4, c5, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, g6, d4. cd knight takes d4 and knight c6. We more or less we covered, I gave you the basic ideas, couple of main variations, what we're playing for, and basically that's all you have all you need to know to get reasonable position in uh, this variation of English opening. Now we're gonna go and uh, look in the variation of English where white does not fianchetto the bishop on g3 and does not play d4 right away which is c4, c5, knight c3 or knight f3, it doesn't matter which order black devel white develops the knight knight f3 g6 and if they play e3 now this is the variation we will cover now white practically has to play d4 here since that's why they played e3 and after d4 black has a couple of ways to play first of all they can castle here and second they can play c takes d so I wanna stick to c takes d variation. We have choices, but I uh, let me make this choice for you and advise you the move that gives black clear and satisfactory position. After c takes d and e takes d, obviously knight takes d4 makes no sense at all since why did white play e3 then? e takes d and d5. Well, here white can play simply bishop e2 or queen b3 or bishop to g5. Now they can also play c takes d. Those are the variations white has here. Well let's go with the simplest one. c takes d, knight takes d5 and after bishop c4 we can play simply knight b6 and you do have a good position here because after bishop b3 we just castle and if white castles we go knight c6 and we are perfectly safe and we're doing okay after bishop e3 we can go simply knight a5 with the idea of knight takes b3 and bishop e6 that's what we want to do so uh, what c takes d variation does not uh, promise any 
uh, advantage to white. Well, one of the ambitious variations is bishop g5, and the way I would recommend to play after bishop g5 is simply knight e4. This is temporary pawn sacrifice because white should play here c takes d. Well, not knight takes d5, which is, this is a real bad move, knight takes d5, because we play knight takes g5, knight takes g5, and play pawn to e6, and you see now both white knights hang, and white is in real trouble. So after knight e4, white should play c takes d, and of course we can take knight takes c3, b takes c, and queen takes d5, which is also playable position, but I would recommend knight takes to g5 in this position, knight takes to g5, knight takes to g5, and simply castling, and uh, position is good for black, because after bishop c4, um, well, actually, black can even go e5 in this position. So most black wants to go e5 at some point. So white should go knight f3 voluntarily. And then after bishop g4 and bishop e2, black can go even queen b6. And later on, black will play simply bishop takes f3, followed by taking pawn on d4 with a queen or with a bishop. This position is perfectly safe for um, black. Now, what else can white play here? Now, if white plays bishop e2 move, well, of course, by playing simple move like bishop e2, you cannot count on any advantage for white. So black goes knight c6, after, after d5, uh, bishop e2, black goes castling, white castles, knight c6, and uh, white has no advantage at all. If white goes h3 to prevent bishop g4, you can simply play bishop to e6. And after c5, go knight to e4. You see, now black has very active position. And some move like bishop e3, you can even play knight takes to c5, d takes c, and d4, getting your piece back and getting superior positions. Now, if you, you can tell easily that Black's bishops are a lot more active than white's bishops. Black has dominating knight on d4, and c5 pawn will need some attention. So black is doing real well here. So white cannot just to play 100% passively, because then they will have even disadvantage in position. So in this position, after d5, we covered bishop g5 move, we covered cd move, and there is a queen b3 move also, the attacking the d5 pawn. We can simply play d takes c. This is the easy way to play. Bishop takes c4, we can simply castle, and after knight e5, go e6. And if white plays bishop e3, then we play simply knight c6. Knight takes c6, b takes c, Black is doing very fine. Castle, knight d5, and they have good knight on d5. Then they can play a later either bishop d7, rook b8, or maybe even queen b6 and bishop a6, followed by that. Black definitely has no problems. Maybe even better than that. Maybe black has a little better position. They also can play knight b6. Notice, and after bishop e2, bishop to b7. And they have very good position here. So this position is very satisfactory. So white 
does not have an advantage if in the position, in the opening position, white plays after c4, c5, knight c3, knight f6, uh, knight f3, g6, they play e3, and after bishop g7, d4, you take c takes d, e takes d, go d5, and you guaranteed stable and uh, the stable and good position without any problems in the opening. That will conclude uh, coverage of this part of uh, coverage of uh, the English defense, how to play. That's another way to play against English defense. We already mentioned on c4 you can play e5, but if you will play on c4, c5, I would say it's a lot more competitive way and I would recommend to play like this.